most of us love relying on someone else's opinion rather than our own intuition. But we are all intuitive beings. Do you really trust everyone so much more than trusting yourselves? So people tell you, I've seen a movie. It's really great. I just loved it. And you trust them. And one day you might see the same movie that you talked about that, um, that you said, oh yeah, I've heard it was good. And you check it out and, and you go, oh my God, I just didn't like it at all. It was really bad. It's same with everything. I reckon it's enough to trust as much as you trust a pilot to take you to your destination. But the rest, whatever you can do yourself, do your own research. Just um, tune in. Listen to your own radar. We all have a radar, antenna, aerial. And that first instinct, the first one, not the second thought. The second thought is second hand, but the first intuition is most likely right. But we often don't listen to it. And we go, oh, I haven't listened to that. Some people don't even recognize that, that they had that intuition. This is how ignorant they are. But some of us have learned hard way. I'd say people who are in tune with their true nature and who have snapped out of um, hypnosis, of separation, being separate, me, I, or self-centered or ego, they probably are more intuitive and they, more, they, they act upon their senses or they basically sniff it. They just know when people talk bullshit, they know when people are lying with, with their, basically if people are double standard, politically correct, which means lies. It's easy to recognize someone who talks from the bottom of their heart or, or their being, some would call it soul. We can all recognize this, every single one of us, but we are just too blinded with, um, with life events and the story of me. Unfortunately, a few months ago, I had an accident and I broke my arm. Um, I was lucky that ambulance came pretty quick and um, some lovely people helped me and they looked after my scooter while I was in, in hospital. And um, there was one thing that um, where I was put on the spot and this is what, what I want to share. Well, basically the doctors asked me to stay overnight first and decide um, if I needed the surgery or not. Because if you're over a certain age, um, they usually choose for you not to have surgery. But what they told me, all the surgeons that visited, was 
that I basically um, would have better movement on my arm if I had the surgery. They mentioned about being able to lift about 75% of my arm if I didn't have surgery. And um, they didn't tell me the percentage, but they said it, it would be better. And they felt that I was still young enough. Um, to use my arm better in my life. Um, saying I was young enough was like, I was, I'm over 50. And um, I don't know whether if one is over 60 or 70, they, um, they reckon that surgery isn't as necessary because you wouldn't be using your arm, arms as much or, you know, you wouldn't need 100% of functionality. But they did tell me that um, because of nature of injury, um, I injured like my shoulder. It was near the shoulder, but it was broken. Um, that I, I would never be the same. Like if it was lower down without my shoulder being affected, affected I would have been better off. And I also have osteoporosis. Anyway, the decision was to have surgery. They gave me like 10 minutes to make up my mind. I couldn't even consult anyone. And my battery was almost flat. I couldn't even call anyone, to, you know, and I was in so much pain to do my own research on my phone. I took so many, they gave me so much, so many painkillers. So I really couldn't think properly. I just wanted for the pain to stop. I didn't like idea of surgery. I almost said no to it, but then I changed my mind because they were convincing me. I even asked nurses and they said, oh, they were not allowed to say anything and they wouldn't know. Nurses are lovely, really nice. And um, I was so grateful. And they reckon surgery went well. But I would find after a couple of visits to the surgeon that it took six months to a year to heal, most likely a year, with lots of rehab and stuff. Six months and a year is a massive amount of time for someone who is over 50 and who has left the job to start a new career that had to do with being fit, being a fitness trainer, like a personal trainer. You know, all my dreams were shattered. I just had to deal with osteoporosis news recently. Now this. Anyway, um, I just wish I was told immediately that um, it would take six months to a year rather than being told it would take three months to recover. Even people I would find out later who were in their 20s and had a collarbone broken or shoulder. during the um, motorbike accident. It took them a long time to heal. And I thought, you know, well, it's not surprising. Anyway, they put a metal in my arm and um, I was probably, over, even, even over doing my um, rehab, 
with my physio and um, I was working out from home. It was very, very painful. I never had so many painkillers in my life. But just be careful. I'm telling you this. If you have electric scooter, if you ride a motorbike, be extremely careful. Um, that, that day before I left to grab my coffee, through the area I hate through going because they've got a parked cars and um, tram tracks. And someone opened the door of their car and I had to swerve and avoid them and I got caught in, in the tram tracks. I just couldn't get out. My scooter was just sliding, wasn't listening. I wasn't riding fast or anything. Um, yeah, basically, um, I'm seeing my surgeon tomorrow. It's going to be near six months since um, my surgery. And we'll see how we go. Yet there is more to it. About a um, couple of weeks ago, I had shingles, got them all over my arm, wherever I was really weak, where I felt truly weak was just the whole scapula, <clears throat> the rotators, my hand everywhere, like I felt terrible pain. I was telling my um, physio a couple of weeks ago, I said, I feel this different pain. It just, I said, I don't know if it's me or, you know, seeing my pain differently, but I feel that everything inside is completely crashed, that my bones are crashed as if a bomb literally exploded inside. He didn't know what it was because I thought it was due to us starting working on rotators and um, external rotation. And it was really tough where I had to lift my shoulder forward, that, that would be the last move that would help me lift my arm more. Um, the day before I found out I had shingles, I worked out, I started doing a bench press. Although I was told by my surgeon I couldn't even do a bench press any longer, but they probably don't know what bench press means because they're just surgeons. Um, anyway, I worked for two, two hours and a half. I, yeah, I did my workout and um, after I did my rehab, then on Monday I was working out with my physio, but I, I wasn't doing well. Um, took a couple of Panadols, ibuprofen, didn't help me much at all. I was in, hor I was in severe pain. Um, my physio suggested uh, that I went to see a chemist. They, they could give me something for rash. I thought I was bitten by something. And uh, maybe for a little, for a split second, I thought, could this be shingles or meningococcal or something? Like I was just, because pain was undescribable, I couldn't describe that. And luckily, um, the chemist told me, she said, oh, this could be viral, are you in pain? I said, yeah, I'm not sure what pain is about. She asked me if I, I was in pain from the red dots that I had here. Um, and I said, I wasn't sure because my whole arm was hurting me. And I said, my arm is broken and I'm trying to recoup and I couldn't tell and she said to me I'll go and see a doctor straight away and I said oh I might not be able to see her today she goes doesn't matter tomorrow I'll just go and see her it could be viral I didn't know viral meant shingles and yeah luckily I could see my doctor that night and she said instantly shingles she said oh your body's telling you rest it's stressed out Interesting enough, 
I've just heard that they are advertising shingles all over TV at the moment. I, it even crossed my mind that um, I got shingles because I was vaccinated and during my, um, ex after my accident, shortly after my accident, I was vaccinated and the second vaccine, I didn't cope well with that. So um, yeah, it was just too much. I felt, I still don't know. I understand it, it, it is from the stress and pain probably, but is it from vaccine as well? That's my question. Why is everyone having shingles? Why are they advertising about shingles? And they also saying there is vaccine for it. And people over 50 are in more danger to get it. And some people get it three times. So, uh, it crossed my mind, seriously, I, I wish I had a shingles vaccine rather than COVID vaccine because I was never scared from COVID, not for a second. I'm not scared from dying, but I don't feel com comfortable about pain because I had so much of it with my few autoimmunes. It's just too much at times really too much it's it's hard to function it's hard to work i even left my job accident happened a month after i left my job but that's that's okay i needed this time to recoup um now again to get to the point um i just explained i just want to explain what happened but my point is because of osteoporosis, because of the bones being affected and everything. And um, I would like to mention vitamins and supplements now. Well, here in Australia, if you ask the doctors, after you, you told that calcium is bad, you know, because your, your bones are bone marrow, they don't absorb it well. Um, and you ask them what calcium is best, they just go. Then you ask them how much vitamin D or what vitamin D to take, they go. So in Australia, they, rec they recommend you just 1,000 units of vitamin D, the doctors, right? I think it's, it's really bad. Really, really bad. Especially if if you have underlying condition you do not know about. For years and years and years, my iron levels were bad and I just couldn't fix it. I was on mean green diet. I, was I started even taking later on iron supplements that I was prescribed by a specialist. It was still low. I started watching Dr. Campbell after my son told me about him. And a couple of his videos talked about vitamin D. He was a blessing for me. This is only a few months ago. My vitamin D was always bad, always, always bad. Well, after watching Dr. Campbell, I started taking 4,000 units of vitamin D. And I started taking K2 with that. I'm actually taking drops because I'm taking calcium as capsules as well. Um, my ca calcium capsules, they also have magnesium with them, K2 and D and D3, but I take separately 4,000 units of vitamin D and I take K2, one a day. And um, I take iron tablets, but not all the time. Now I, I started taking actually B12 drops on a regular basis. First time in my life, my iron levels were good. First time ever that I know. Whether it's, it's got to do with vitamin D, K, 
um, and see getting taken together with my um, other stuff like B12 and occasionally iron and having liver at least once a week. Or well, actually, sometimes I have it once a fortnight, depends. And sometimes I have a bit of a red meat. I just remind myself. And um, I remind myself to have vegetables. My point here is for you to check vitamin D. Because we usually do not know if we have osteoporosis unless we fall down. When I fell off my scooter first time, there was only a little fall, but I couldn't heal for months. I was, my whole body was shaking. I didn't know what it was. And I thought something happened to my liver. And my doctor said to me, did you ever check your hips? And, and I was like, why? No. She said she suspected bones. So she actually suggested that I did bone density test. Um, and it was pretty bad. It, um, it's quite advanced, uh, the osteoporosis. And I tried to be that because that they, there was a pain. So I never knew what it was. And I was working out in the gym when I was doing um, sit-ups or um, Russian twists, if I was twisting like that. Or, and if you go that way, um, if your spine like is kind of curved, it doesn't like it, it goes sideways, doesn't like it. So isolation exercises are kind of healing for me. Anyway, I'm on, my, on medication. Once a week, I take those um, osteoporosis tablets where you have to stand up for half an hour after you take them. Um, they're very uncomfortable. They, they make you nauseous. Real, that's it's it's pretty bad. Um, anyway, it's I have to take that for the next five years, and um, I'm also doing my workouts, and which I did already anyway. But some of the workouts were making my pain worse. I knew there was something wrong, so they were bones I I never knew. Um. Weight-bearing exercises, especially Romanian deadlift, are very good for osteoporosis. Vitamin D3, K2, I'd say take it at least 4,000 units of vitamin D. If you take 4,000 ANOVA, some people might need even more than that. But if you take 4,000 ANOVA, take um, K2 with that. And vitamin K2 can be found in, in kimchi or sauerkraut also. Broccoli is also good to eat. It's got lots of good stuff. And um, I read, I think cherries are good for pain. Although I avoid to eat fruit because my liver isn't good at the moment, but I'll probably a handful of cherries isn't too bad. Vitamin C every day, potentially powder. I'm taking vitamin C since I left hospital. Actually, they started giving it to me in hospital to tablets every day. And I haven't stopped. I haven't skipped it for a day. Um, I feel that vitamin C is really good for healing. That's what it says. If you had a wound, because if you had like stitches inside, stitches outside, and actually my wound outside healed pretty quick. That was at least some good news. It's a massive scar, like about 13 centimeter scar. But yeah, it, it healed pretty quickly. Um, anyway, my point here, here is. Um, you know yourself best. When I talked about intuition to start with, no one knows you as well as you do. No doctor knows you. They can tell you little things. They can tell you this is 
wrong with you, this and that, but you must know what feels good. Don't expect someone else to tell you, you know, what's good for you, how much. Maybe eat a couple of things, try it, maybe skip few things that you suspect are not doing you well. Although my body starts going into a kind of sort of spasm if I if it doesn't like something that I take. So I'm, I'm talking nutrition now. Um, but be serious with your um, nutrition, with your supplements. And because you all have different conditions and, and our bones are getting worse as we get older. And if your body is weak for whatever reason, we can get these shingles that are so painful. That's unbelievable. Like my arm was almost like I couldn't move it. It was, I couldn't move it. Like nights are the worst. You just can't sleep. For, I, I can't sleep for over two weeks now properly. And um, actually pain started before the spot started. And they give you some um, antiviral tablets. You have to look after yourself. You, you, are, you have to look after your own well-being. You are your own master and healer. If your body tells you this food isn't good for you, don't do it. Take your supplements on a regular basis. Um, especially with us women, with menopause and everything. Um, we bleed a lot and issues start and we have to pick it up on time. This is why I'm saying that intuition is very, intuition is very important for all of us. But people seem to love to live under instructions or prescriptions. And I often hear people say, oh, you know, science said that science is proven, science said, like, how do you know? Can you really trust the science each time? Just remember, that once they believed that um, earth was flat and people were executed if they said that it wasn't flat. And it was strong belief with everyone. Watch out for the beliefs and for that what mind tells you. You can say, yes, I know all of that. I know, I know. Trust me, knowing everything is ignorance. Say that you know nothing. But don't only say it. Live it. But it's up to you to do it, right? You go to the doctors or to naturopath or nutritionist, you go to gym, to train, but your body knows how much is too much and how little is too little and what feels good. Okay, thank you for tuning in. May everyone stay well.